What's up? It's your boy Carcino, and this is why you don't do album reviews the same day the album comes out. When you do an album review the first day an album comes out, you're not giving yourself time enough to enjoy the project. To actually hear the music and let it resonate with you. Because if I've done that after listening to Pusha T's Daytona album, I would have thought of it as, eh, it's all right. It's okay. It's not really that good. That's off the initial listen. Off of the initial listen, some of the songs just didn't resonate to me. Now, after listening to the album a few times, like a number of times, because there's only seven songs, you're able to appreciate the work and really let it resonate to you. And you're like, oh, man, this is pretty. This is actually pretty good. And see, I like songs that grow on you once your ears can get adjusted to it, because sometimes your ears are adjusted to listening to something else that when it hears something else that's good or great, it can't appreciate it right away. You have to listen to it a couple of times because you're detoxing that other stuff you were listening to out of your system. You understand? Hope you do. So the first track is If You Know, You Know. And that one, at first, I wasn't too impressed with. But now after listening to it uh, quite a few times, Lyrically, it is on point, times 10, no doubt about it whatsoever. And what it is, is just minimalism at its finest. <laughs> it's very minimal, but murderous rhymes. I love the rhyme patterns. And one of my favorite songs is the tr second track, The Games We Play. The Games We Play, lyrically, is his best work on the album. Clearly educational and just, you can almost like follow it. It's like he's telling a story to you and you're following it. And the beat sounded like uh, DOA, like they took the keyboards off DOA. I mean, the guitar. So, uh, great beat selection choice, too. It fit. It's like some old Johnny Guitar Walker stuff. And a lot of, number three is a lot of people's favorite track with Rick Ross. Hard Piano. Now, Hard Piano to me was a different type of beat. And to me, this one is just okay. Maybe because Rick Ross is on it, but to me it was just okay. I, I maybe this will grow on me again later, but definitely wasn't one of my favorites. You know, the beat was different, and it just threw people off. Like, whoa, son, this is kind of weird. And the beat, I kind of like, but I never really, I'm not really feeling the song as much as like everybody else is like raving over it. Hard piano, dog. Hard piano. Hard piano. Okay. Hard piano. I'm like, oh, okay, dude. I'm listening. Did you listen to hard piano? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I wasn't blown away by hard piano, but okay. Like one of the songs that grew on me was "Come Back, Baby." Oh my God, I love this song. Now. This is grown to be one of my favorite songs. That I didn't really give it a chance. Really, the first time I heard it, but Come Back Baby, oh my God. I was just listening to that one song for a half an hour <laughs> straight. I'm like, man, I'm gonna do something. Let me play this song. And Santeria, I love that. Yeah, I love Santeria. That's fly. That's my ride in the car song. My Santeria. You know, people don't do that no more. Riding the car, 
Be like, what's up, babe? What's doing? How you doing? Oh, hey! And that don't happen no more. Then the Kanye West, what would me do? <laughs> so, this seemed like a song that was more fitted for a Kanye album. Concept, the actual name dropping. And this is a good song. Ye had a nice verse. Or should we say Pusha had a nice verse he wrote for Kanye? Right? And I like the song, but it wasn't like, you know, best song on the album. Then the last song. Is the one they set up for everybody for the punch. The best beat probably on the album by far. And for real. Infrared is, I mean, what what more can I tell you about infrared? <laughs> the lyrical monster performance of all time was infrared for a half a day infrared rule drake had to come and put that fire out immediately because infrared was a monster a straight monster that beat and everything and this is what i meant i said something earlier about people who wouldn't get the message like people wouldn't understand or wouldn't get it all the, the shots that was sent on infrared that they only remember like the two lines he said really two direct lines but then a lot of stuff was indirect that drake heard when he said he's up there with the coles and the kendricks and talking about the other sock puppets playing the games and gimmicks. When he was talking about that, he was speaking about actual Drake and, and actually minimizing him as compared to J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar and saying he's up there with the Coles and the Kendricks and you just a sock puppet you know like that's what you are meaning that he's basically being controlled by the white people you know for those who just need it really written out and he he goes over that more and more when he brings up the fact that will smith won the first grammy Jay-Z didn't start getting his props until Annie. So I don't tap dance for the crack of singing Mammy. Meaning, I'm not impressed with you winning all these Grammys and Billboard Awards, Drake. Because they didn't even respect Jay-Z or none of the other greats before. They gave Will Smith his first Grammy. It was other people before him who should deserve Grammys and didn't get them. But Will Smith got the first Grammy, you know? Look at that. And then Jay-Z didn't get his props until he dropped the song when he had Annie on the beat. That's when he, he got his prop. And he had Reasonable Doubt, Volume 1, and all this stuff. So he's bringing it to Drake that nothing that you did and your accomplishments are impressive to me. Your awards mean nothing. So this is what I'm saying. These are the things that people missed during the song that really resonated with Drake and pissed him off to make him think you're a prop. You're a pro you only put up there God's plan and nice for what the your sock puppet doing doing these gimmicks games and gimmicks is what he's calling god's son 
I mean, God's plan and nice for what? He's calling them games and gimmicks. And like he's tap dancing for Massa, basically. This is what Infrared did to Drake. It pissed him off. And I told you, and I told you, this track was a monster, lyrically. He was just, the way he was flowing on this record was sick. He changed his flows a lot on this album. You saw about you saw about three or four different flows on this album. But the flow he used for infrared was merciless. He was rapping like he was a mercenary. It was serious. Now, overall, it's hard to rate this. This is more like an EP than an actual album. But it's great. Now, out of four stars, I give it three and a half stars. Excellent. By far, some of his best work. Now, I remember he had Exodus, and I think Exodus was probably more harder than this one. This is a little bit more balanced. But Exodus was on point. I love Exodus. So, y'all tell me, what do you think about the album? Do you agree with my review? Did you have a similar take on it? I'm out.